Hey guys, it's William Congreef here, and you have just seen me going through all the preparations to launch this rocket legitimately rather than cheating, because I knew that you would be mad if I just cheated my way through this game, and that would be no fun for any of us. But I also knew that you would be bored if I tried to talk to you about one thing or another through the entire process of building this rocket. So I decided to record myself building the rocket so you know I actually built it, and then uh, when it was time to do the actual mission, just go ahead and hope for the best and record it. So, here we go. Um, I'm going to activate the cameras, and then this thing is hopefully not going to explode horribly. Camera, camera. You might be wondering why I have these cameras when I can just move this external camera around anywhere I want. Well, the reason is I can't, because I'm going to be with my little guy here inside the cockpit, going through every last thing with him, except the agonizing pain and the sheer terror of it all. And, of course, not the absolute horror of knowing that I'm the one who decides if he lives or dies, but... Knowing all that, I think there are eight cameras on this thing, so let me check if I've gotten them all. Um, blah, 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 that's four, five... Trying to organize them somewhere where they'll be out of the way, and yet I can still watch them. Four, five, six cameras. Seven cameras. Okay, I'm missing a camera. I think it's the underboom camera here. Yep. Let's see. There we go. And that's eight cameras. Okay, so, um, just gonna try and organize them in ascending order. So I've got this camera here. No, that's boring. I'm just gonna try and identify the cameras. So that camera is pointed upwards, I think. And it should be just looking kind of at the rocket engines. I think it's not that one. It's, um, none of those. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this camera down. That will be the camera right here. Rotating that camera down so that we can have a view of that from this camera of what's going on below, because this is probably our best camera for looking below. Um, there we go. And yes, I have done test firings of, these ro of this rocket, so all the staging should be good up until this stage. After that, this thing, which is my actual MUN moon rocket will... I have not test fired it, so... It'll hopefully go to the moon. It'll hopefully go there in one piece! It'll hopefully go there without killing this little guy in the corner! I am so hopeful for somebody who's about to die horribly. Um, so let's see now. Just angling all the cameras before launch. Uh, this one can't really see anything useful upwards, so I'm going to rotate it down also. And I know the cameras rotate slowly, but trust me, that's very useful when you get to the more zoomed-in things. Like, once you're all the way at that zoom bar, clicking it moves the camera, like, three entire windows over, and then... If it didn't move this slowly, you'd just have no control of it. And besides, it's not really too slowly. Um, so then, that would be a camera which is under one of those rockets. I think it's over here somewhere, probably. Um, trying to see if I can make the rocket light up for the... So I can show the camera where it is. Uh, here we go. It's under this rocket. It's under this rocket here. Um, then let's get these nose cameras. These look like, like my two nose cameras. Gonna um, see, do either of these ones have a chance to have a good view down? Um, the one which is looking up at this might... Uh, I think that's this one. Rotate... Rotate. If I'm... yep, okay, so uh, the correct one is rotating. You can see it on the big display, which is looking at my rocket, and on the little display down there. You can actually see it rotating. Whoever built this mod is a genius. I think he's called Rom Ferro, or at least that's his username. The laser, the laser camera mod, it's just, it's so wonderful. So there we go, that's a pretty nice view down from that camera. Um, this camera I'm going to leave pointing up, just so that I have one upward-facing camera. I could also get my laser system stack running, so that I could have that camera. Probably will do that. Target cam. Yep. 
and that's just looking straight up from right here-ish. Then, um, what else, what else, what else? I've got this camera over here. Um, I think I'll... Uh, that camera can't really get a useful view down, so I'll just have it pointed up at my command pod-ish thing. Uh, then... I've got my boom cameras, which will give me a great view of what's actually going on with my rocket. And then I've got this one camera here, which I'm still not sure exactly what I'm doing with it. Have I even activated that camera? I might have nine cameras. Oh, yep, looks like I have nine cameras. Okay, so then there's this camera. Uh, not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this camera. It's kind of just wedged in there because I felt like that would be a cool place to wedge a camera. It's probably got a pretty good view of the rocket, so I'm going to angle it down like that. Then, um... These cameras both have great views of the rocket, so I'm going to try and get them to have their views of the rocket. That way if something fails spectacularly, we'll have footage of it back on the ground. Uh, there we go. Rotate that around so it's looking at the rocket. And you have to admit that having these cameras on the rocket is pretty cool. It really makes you feel like you're actually doing a space mission and you're not just playing a video game. Um, there we go. Uh, that's a pretty good angle up. And then this one, I think we'll just... This one will look superb. Um, wait, now I want to rotate. I think I want to go this way. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm looking at those engines there. And... It's also nice when the cameras see each other, like this camera here can see that camera. I could probably have this this camera look up to that camera. I think I'm going to do that. Yep. Hello! Um, but going back down to the last camera, which I actually have to orient before flight, I really hope this thing just doesn't blow up, because whenever I restart the flight or reload a quick save, I have to reorient all these cameras again. If I have to do that, I'm just going to get into orbit before I try playing around with these things uh, another time. But there we go. Another beautiful view of the rocket there. Quick save it for what it's worth. And go to IVA view. And this is the place where you start really appreciating those cameras because unless I had this mod, this would be the entire view of what's going on during the launch. And now I'm just going to watch the launch through those cameras while you all, all listen to me watch the launch through those cameras. And Mech Jeb is going to actually fly us up. Um, now, I tested to around with this rocket design, and it lifted a whole lot of cargo. It lifted 75 tons of cargo to low curb in orbit. The thing that I'm trying to lift right now is 66 tons, I think. And so it should probably be fine. Um, but there's always that margin for catastrophic failure. So everything looks good there. Save Daruni. into the hands of Mech Jeb, Fate, and some video game designers. Three, two, one. Wait, 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 wait. cancel, 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 cancel. Okay, I might have to do some of this from outside the rocket, because I actually need to um, run the RCS systems on the fly to keep this rocket level. So I'm going to turn off those monopropellant tanks so they don't drain. Oh no, I don't have a monopropellant tank up here, so it's going to be a bit harder to control. Uh, that's something I wasn't accounting for, the lack of monoprop. Um, I'm sure MechJeb can deal with that. So I'm going to be kind of running the RCS systems on the fly, and because this is the first launch, I want to make sure everything goes okay. So I am actually going to stay outside the ship for this. And without any further ado, here is the launch. <laughs> Thanks to
gravity turn by now. It's pretty good. Gotta check my monoprop though, I don't want to run out. No, I've got plenty of monoprop aboard. <laughs> solid boosters up here, they're all providing control also, because, um, oh no, oh no, which, oh no, I've got the staging wrong here somewhere, um, blah, just gonna have to pop it on and hope for the best. Okay, so I just lost ludicrous amounts of Delta V there, when I had to below that emergency stage, I lost an entire stage of Delta V simply to not having set up the staging commands correctly, and that is just such a horrible feeling, because now my autopilot is having to redo the gravity turn and everything, and I don't even know how to abort sequence program into this thing. I should probably manually abort it and start over, but maybe I want to get to orbit first. I'm even going to make it to orbit. I'm not sure if I even have the Delta V abort left. To make it to orbit, I think I do. Low down in the atmosphere still though, which means this rocket isn't getting anywhere near the efficiency that it should be getting, because it should be in space before it activates, and I'm still falling, so I'm just gonna try and abort, and you're probably gonna get some pretty cool views from these cameras as everything falls away. visuals of the last moments of this ship. I'm just going to use this camera to try and view. Whoops, we're upside down, so I should be using um, this camera maybe. I don't know. Um, well, there's the ocean down there. This guy is just saying in his head, I think that went well. I, I don't think that anything went wrong. I think that he's completely got this under control. <sighs> Poor misplaced optimism guy. Uh, let's just try and rotate one of the cameras on the command pod. See what's going on. Whoa, just lost all the, uh, all um, seven of those cameras as we hit the water, and I'm hoping this parachute won't whip straight out, and I'm hoping the g-force from this won't kill this guy. There's not really much I can do to slow us down, but here it comes, and woohoo! We're still alive! That's science. There's the parachute, I'm gonna go to IVA, and look, there's the horizon. Whoa, yanking around a bit. 
can try and catch the horizon on this camera also uh, in relation to my pod so that I can figure out when I'm going to start hitting this water. Oh wait, I could just do that through my radar altitude indicator. Not sure exactly how I'm doing radar altitude with my pods spinning wildly like this, but apparently I am. I'm just going to disengage that autopilot. Don't know why that was still on. There we go. Um. Hmm. Roll this camera around. There's Mech Jeb. Drifting down to a gentle splashdown. I'm guessing this camera is underwater and this camera is barely above water. And that viewport is underwater. <laughs> Yep. Ah, ah, I'm being strangled by my own spaceship. I'm being strangled by my own spaceship. I think that that's something that pilots don't yell enough. I'm being strangled by my own spaceship. I really think if... How will these pilots learn if we don't have their own spaceship strangle them? Now I'm just going to call this ship. I suppose if I was a top notch space agency, I could analyze this wreckage and uh, figure out how the ocean was bubbling up as if somebody had like a geyser there. Man. Space crack, deep sea crack, and it's not even that deep in the sea. I'm just out here. I wonder if I can get one of these cameras to be on the to Look at myself while I kill that other camera. Yeah, look at your doom cameras. Fear me and my laser. Uh, burning out your eye. Really burning out the eye. Let's try welding it. I don't know what that does exactly. Ah, I think I'm able to weld objects together. Yeah. Let's try a decouple. It's a okay, successfully decoupled camera. That's strange. Okay. Well, um... Once my parts have stopped, did my flight and magically teleport back. And we're back in the vehicle assembly building. I have really good engineers working for me when the rocket is just built this quickly again after I've blown it up. Let's see. Gonna grab some RCS for this so I don't have to worry too much about those upper tanks. and then um, let's see um, now I've got to turn off all these tanks individually that's going to be a slow process so I invite you to listen to this piece of classical music <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, who needs the London Orchestra when you've got me and my humming? 
but unfortunately I've turned them all off now, so you have to watch me play an awesome game rather than horribly try and hum something. So that looks good. Just going to give it RCS all the way up now, because it has RCS to spare anyways. There we go. Mech jab. I'll let you do the honors. Count with me. Three, two, one. staging error which would cause so much grief um so again, because Jebediah Kerman, because, I mean, because Mechanical Jeb, Mechanical Jebediah Kerman has the RCS tanks, and now all he's got is this to steer with, so I really feel sorry for him, because that's nothing when you're trying to shunt around this huge rocket. Still, um, I guess it's better than nothing, I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to control it with just the torque on that pod. Actually, looks like it's doing a pretty good job controlling the rocket. I guess it's because... If you give me a long enough lever, I can turn a gigantic, poorly built rocket. I'm sure that's the quote. I'm sure I didn't just make that up as I went along, trying to base it off of some other quote, so you reasonably think it was that quote or two. Let's see, I don't know if the Delta V stage to make sure. Stay. 
I forgot to put any lights on this thing. You know what? I'm just gonna fly it like this in the dark. Take that. I don't need lights. Well, actually, now that you've seen that I can put it up there, um, I'll probably take William Congreve up in a rocket just like this, and I'm gonna just warp it up to a bit in the behind this one in a bit, and then, um, that'll all be good, and you'll know that I won't have cheated or anything, and, um, everything will be butterflies and unicorns and roses. Those were just the happiest things that came to mind. Um, a mythical, really powerful monster, a sharp, spiky death flowers, and, um, scary winged things. That shows you what kind of state my mind is in. Inventive! Oh look, he would be using the RCS if I had left him. Huh. Oh well, let's not. And there we go. Bring the rocket gently down to... done. And we're in orbit. Congratulations, everybody. Um, I'm not sure, this might even make a good point to end the Let's Play at, but I am a bit tired of making those end frame things, because they take... it's not so much inventing them, because I can really invent anything for them to be... Um, by the way, if you comment with one with something for one of those end frames, I'll probably put it in, just because I'm running a tad low on ideas. I try not to make it repetitive, but if you come up with something good, then I'll almost definitely put it in, unless it's too hard to implement. Um, but what am I, why am I doing an outro or anything here? I should be launching a second rocket. So let's go back to the space center. Grab the VAB, and ah, it's good to be back up at a nice frame rate. One shot one. Top. And goodbye. The program is taking so long just to figure out everything that it has to remove now. Oh no, did I just crash this thing? Oh good, phew. Um, I'm actually going to split the recording now because that came dangerously close to corrupting the entire recording and that would have just been awful. There we go, so... Making sure not to corrupt the recording. Huh. Didn't bargain for that, but that RCS tank is one that I have to put this up a bit, or the ladders aren't going to join nicely. Um, yep. And then, um, so let's see, what did I want? I wanted lights, and I wanted the correct person to be aboard. So, um, lights, 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 utility tab. module. Aiming down like that. There we go. And then I've got a nice rocket there. Perfect. So, um, great. Save that and launch it.
and the one nuclear engine that's only designed for orbit is supporting the entire rocket. I'm not going to complain. Bill Kerman, you will not be going on this flight because I have this thing which allows me to put myself on the flight. And it's time to go to space. Hyper edit style. Edit an orbit. Rendezvous. Select vessel. Lots of debris. There we go. The light's on. Check that that's not using up my power. Or at least it's not using up my power faster than my radioisotopic generators here can provide it. And then everything looks good. Um, I'll leave that in orbit just because it would be sort of a waste to bring it back to the ground. Um, and uh, I know that this rocket really should have about half of its fuel gone if I was going to be accurate to what was going on in the previous thing, but um, I think that that was just because I didn't have the staging set up quite correctly. And so I'm just too lazy to bother to try and remove the fuel or anything, and I think that it's kind of legitimate that the fuel is there anyways. I'm gonna turn on my cameras now. One, two... Three... Four... Five... Six... Seven... Accidentally nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's only eight. something around like here. Do I have another camera on the outside of these engines? Is there a camera around here? Got this camera right. Got both of these cameras. Hmm. Could have sworn I had nine cameras last flight. I'm sure the other one will turn up sometime. Um, right. Couldn't have been on a stage that I already detached, could it? No, it couldn't have. Um, I'm going to deploy the lander legs and the ladders now, just because once I'm in orbit I might as well. Trying to actually get to these ladders. Here they come. Which one is best for... Ooh, look at the lander legs unfolding there. That's nice. Um, then uh, this one actually has a nice view up, so I'll leave that one up. Uh, then I want the boom cam, the lower boom camera to be able to check out what's going on sort of under the rocket. Like... Is this the lower boom camera? I think it is, yep. I want this one to look at the rocket's engine. Um, then the rest of them I can sort of orient in flight, I think. And so the next stage is doing the orbital transition to actually get to the MUN. And that's probably what's going to use up most of the Delta V which is in my rocket. Um, this guy's freaking out here because he's never experienced orbit before or something. Um, hey there, little buddy, you'll be fine. If only he knew what was in, what was actually in store for him. 
then he'd be jumping out and trying to walk back home. But he doesn't. And neither do you. And I don't either. And you might ask how that is. Well, it's simple. I have no clue whether this rocket's gonna work or not. But all that aside, we're quick saving, and it's time to start actually going to the Mun. So, maneuver planner. Planner node two. Find you in close approach and set the target. Match velocity to the target. Hmm. Try to figure out which one of these I'm meant to use to go to a moon. I think it's either Hoffman Trans. Hoffman. Ho. 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 Ha. Ho. 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 Hoffman. 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 Hoffman transfer to target. Or. Um. Transfer to another planet, maybe. Find here. Intercept target. Probably not that. It seems like all these are to be used to get to a different. Um, to get to a different spaceship. But I'm trying to go to a planet, and so I'm probably going to have to do a lot of this sort of by hand. Um. But I can at least let Mechjib get me started. So, target the moon. You can see my target cam change to that. Gonna bring this up. Go. Night vision. Thermal is actually just like a mixture of invert and silhouette. Invert and silhouette. And night vision. It's daytime right now, I think. I don't know. If I had solar panels, I could check from inside here by checking my energy flow, but I don't, so I'm just going to say it's probably day, from the fact that it looks like it's getting lit up even where there aren't lights. So then, um... I guess I just create and execute. I mean, I know how this thing works, but I've never been able to find a good way to make it take me to a moon, so... Saving once more. Hopefully I'm going to have to go back to this save and create an executing. And, um, let's go to the map. You'll see that the things from these ghosts, the things from these cameras go screwing when I'm on the map. That, um, I'm now traveling to, like, there or something. Just call me Zoom 
looking in this camera, I think I'm about to see that that camera moves right down this. No? I guess I don't know what this camera is unless... Oh wait, no, that's not the camera I should be looking at. Where's the other Oh! You know what, I bet that's it. I bet I haven't activated the overboom camera. reality or something, not thermal, or like, um, difficult to see target acquisition, because it's not thermal, but it's pretty cool what it is, it's, uh, it's often the thing that I use when I'm on the dark side or something and I just can't see at all what's going on, and I need something to see, because even night vision doesn't work when it's pitch black, night vision is just a green filter and turning up the brightness. Okay, so, let's see if that worked. It looks like it worked absolutely beautifully. And I've still got 91 meters per second of Delta V to go. So, um, I could try and use MechJob to do all of this stuff, but I'm probably not going to. Um, I'm just going to do this myself. Warp time and everything to do the correct MUN insertion to give me a good equatorial MUN orbit. Then I'm going to put down at the anomaly that my ISA map sat pointed out to me. Rocket slows down as it climbs towards the apopsis. And suddenly I'm in the gravitational pull of the MUN. 
now. Ah, there we go. Told you I was in the gravitational pull of the man. Um, and it's time to lure my periapsis into an actual orbit. I could ask Mechchip to circular circularize this altitude. That's probably the safest thing to do. I'm even I'm in the SOI of the man, so I can do that. SOI, of course, being sphere of influence. If I was outside the sphere of influence for the man, uh, um, Kerbal's gravity would be more powerful than the man's, and um, going into a circular orbit would just do be something stupid and unfold to the and surface or something. But because I'm in the SI of the man, I can do this maneuver planner. Go back inside. Go back inside. It's cold out in space. You should have worn a jacket. How could you? just uh, kind of let the camera know that it was gone. Oh well. And then there were seven. Hmm. I didn't think I had two cameras on that stage, but I guess I did. Okay. So, wonder if that actually worked now. Yep. I'm now in a circular orbit. Checking how much Delta VR got left on the rocket. I have plenty, but... I shouldn't get cocky, because I need to only use up this Delta V for the landing. If I use any more Delta V than that, I'm going to have to jettison my landing gear. Actually, I can probably go to these nuclear motors without uh, dropping the landing pod, but it'll definitely be stupid. It'll be the sign of a newbie. So, now that I'm in this orbit, let's go back inside the pod where it's nice and cozy and warm, and pull out the maps of the outside where it's cold and bleak and dreary. And I don't have any data. But I do remember where the thing was. Oh, wait. We're talking about the MUN here. And I do have data for that. So, here we go. Anomalies are on. Current position is on. That target looked to be at, like, 0, 023.4 degrees. So let's try that. Um, gonna... I'll leave the Delta V screen up, because that might be useful. And then I'll get my landing autopilot. Enter target coordinates. Don't know what that is for exactly. Oh, I just picked a target on the map at some time. It said like what? 4? 23, 4? Yep. Okay. So then, um. It looks like everything's good. So I'm gonna save and ask Mechjeb to bring us in. Quick save. And take us in, Mech Jeb. Okay, now I'm going to try and get one of these cameras to lock onto the moon. So I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's up to my spaceship. I suppose I could look out the window, but no, it's not there. Wait, I can get the. I can follow the laser to look at a few images. Ooh, now look, it's rotating. I'm pretty much going to lose my chance. Beautiful. 
so my camera is now locked on the man, I think. That camera is, at least. Um, I'm gonna try and get this one to do that also. Uh, where's that laser now? Um, because these cameras are on opposite sides of the spaceship. That's why I'm getting both of them to do it. Because if both of them can do it, then I can probably watch the man at all times. And then the rest I'll have fixed relative to the spaceship. So, whoops. Done it. I'm moving to an external view so I can actually figure out what's going on. It's this camera which I'm trying to orient. And I want to turn it like this way, I think. No, other way. There we go. And just bring it down a bit. Oh wait, that's the wrong way I want to bring it. The other way. And there we go. Ah, lock it before it's too late. There we go. So now both cameras are locked on it so that they will stay focused on that, regardless of how the rocket turns. And Mech Jeb is performing a course correction. Wow. This is what computers are. They are fine-tuning your landing coordinates while you're still at, like, what is it, um... Vessel info. Um... Darn it, where's the... Orbit info? Orbital speed... I'm looking for my altitude. Here we go. While you're still at 1.75 megameters above the surface. That is uh, the power of computers. And these cameras have lost their lock, or am I just really far away now? Oh, it's because I'm in the map view. Let's go back inside the cockpit. Um, I should check my Delta V status. Probably got ample, but I should make sure not to accidentally use it all up, because if my program automatically jettisons that stage, that's the end of the mission. I'll move this jettisoning thing up here. Whoa! Okay, I don't want to actually fire all eight of those rockets right now. So I'm gonna try and, um... Uh, it would be dangerous to deactivate them one by one. I guess I'm just gonna have to accept that they're active now and let Mech Jeb make of them what he will. Oh well, once I'm on the ground I can do some fuel balancing and it'll all be fine anyways. For a moment I thought the man had disappeared until I saw it was the spot where there were no stars. Beautiful view of the man. In vehicle view. Okay. And then, um, now I'm just gonna get these cameras trained so that they can look at things during the landing. Uh, this one looks like it's got a better view down than up. If you see the engines wiggling, that's the gimbling uh, of the engines. Um, you'll probably only see it on my engines which are built out of stock parts, or the parts which are n native to KSP rather than the parts which I've imported. But, you know, that's what they're doing. They're gimbling so that they're... so that they turn the rocket a bit. Also there you'll see my laser system camera moving around to keep that image up. Or rather to theoretically keep that image up. Realistically I don't know where that image is coming from, but it's not from my spaceship. Maybe I should untarget the man. Yeah, I think I'm gonna untarget the man. Oh wait, it's already untargeted. Difference from target is down to a couple meters. A couple hundred meters. And I'm still, like, I'm still 17 kilometers out, and my difference from target is staying under a kilometer. That is awesome. Still, it's fluctuating more than I'd want. I think that's because I've given Mech Jeb RCS. Does he really need that RCS? Yeah, he needs it. But I've given Mech Jeb RCS, and that RCS is slightly nudging my rocket. What is he doing with that RCS? Performing course correction. 
Oh, I'm guessing that he's trying to outrun something which is constantly keeping it outrun by him because it's... Just accept the 0.1 meter per second of difference. I guess it doesn't matter much because um, during the landing, I mean, this is walking distance even on the moon. It's a long walk, but it's still walking distance. So, got that camera angled for maximal usefulness. This camera here is probably next. Um, let's see. I think that's a pretty good view. There we go. Now, um, this camera maybe? Oh yeah, that's the lower boom camera. That's going to get a great view of when we actually touch down. First seeing those legs touch down. Looks like we're warping time forwards now. Um, where's this camera? Looks pretty high up on the rocket. Just kind of wedged in there. I could have that thing look down. Maybe I'll have it look sideways. That would be an interesting effect. Yeah, this is the one which is on one of those nuclear motors fuel tanks. Um... I'll probably just have it look down like the rest. Really, everything which is interesting is going to be down. Don't I've got a big lamp in front of the camera. So, maybe like that. That looks pretty good. Um, have I got all the cameras oriented? No, this one isn't really looking at anything interesting. Oh wait, that one's the locked one. Which one am I missing? That camera there. Is it even active right now? And I'm coasting towards deceleration burn. That's fine, but I wonder if I, how much of the fuel I've used up in here. Wow! That shows you just how efficient these eight nuclear motors are. Why do I even have this thing? These nuclear motors are just so fuel efficient. They really are where all of that delta V is coming from. This stage only had like, what? Probably only has like 200 meters per second left in it now, uh, but yet these the nuclear motors are contributing 2,400 meters per second. Oh boy, I hope Mech Jeb has gotten this right. It'll be such a burden if he hasn't. Lying down so I can finally see if this camera is activated or not. Um, it is. Which one is it? That one. Okay. Pretty good view for it. Let's go back to in the cockpit. So I have an idea of what's going on. Okay, I'm going to put this right at the top of the thing so there's no chance for me to see the Oh crap, I don't want that rocket to be active. of my rocket which are going to snap off horribly in this crash. I'm thinking about jumping up and just using my rocket pack to jet upwards, but I still think that Mech Jeb actually is under control of this. I bet the RCS is frantically firing to try and reduce this spinning, because I'm not sure if Mech Jeb is programmed to realize that this is all going to go south very fast. Anything through these cameras, the only way I'm going to get useful information is by 
showing you what's going on outside, and this is all about the viewers, so I think I will let you see Except for the fact that it's gonna go plunge because it's spinning so fast. It's not even really that one. Mech chair, but these, le these legs can only take 12 meters per second of landing. But being unlevel is worse. If it's not level, it's just gonna smash into the terrain. It's gonna tip over, and regardless of whether. Oh boy. I think now we might safely say that Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> On the plus side, I don't need those ladders anymore! How about that? It's not much consolation. Okay, let's see what we've got to work with. Looks like we've still got, um, most of the cameras are working. Uh, I can close down that map. Well, actually, we appear to still be on target, so might as well complete the original mission. Even if we're gonna die on the moon, might not, might as well not make it for nothing. Um, I guess I should get out of my capsule and try and figure out what's going on. The laser system has been snapped off there. I hope laser EVA still works. Yep, but I've lost the shipboard component, so I can't do the beam me aboard or anything. There. Hup! Alright. The good news is, pretty much all of my supplies were in that capsule, so I don't need to go salvaging through this wreckage for food or anything. What I do need to worry about, though, is... Whee! Jumping! Huh. I don't even have any camera with which to capture the first footsteps on the moon. You know what, let's go back and reshoot that. I won't have a camera capture the first steps on the moon. Let's all jointly um, do a big cover up and pretend this never happened. And I'm gonna go back and refocus the camera on that pod so that I can actually capture the first footsteps on the moon. Wee. Boing. This guy is happy. Okay, now, uh, let's see if I can get one of these cameras to focus on the ship. It's so dark. I'm having to strain just to see anything in these cameras. Uh, this one, I think it's blocked by that. What would I want? All the boom cameras will be on the wrong side. Is there a camera on the ship that I can use? Like, uh, this one. That one looks good. Pretend we're still inside the vehicle. It's probably uh, this camera. No, couldn't be. Maybe this camera is what I want. No, that's a boom camera. It'll be on the wrong side. Huh. Looks like one of the cameras on my capsule survived. I think. I don't really know. I wonder how my electrical charge is doing. Looks like I lost both of my generators in that blast, so I should probably turn off this data acquiring equipment unless it's absolutely vital now that I've gotten the basic data, because it's going to drain my small batteries, and I want to have lights and things, or at least whatever light I have inside the pod. Um, is it this camera that I want? It's near to the ground, but maybe it can get an angle. Uh, that nuclear engine that we're lying on is blocking it. You know, usually you'd be more worried about that nuclear engine that we're lying on being in your sentence. Right now, I'm just concerned about my photo shoot. This camera won't orient. Might have been damaged or something in the blast. It'd be a pity if that's the camera that I actually need. Okay, I'm going outside the pod again. See if I can figure out which camera it is. Is it? Is this one being blocked by a lamp? Yeah, there's a lamp right beneath. So let's see if when I aim this camera, yep, it is this camera which is moving in response. Um, but I think that's my pod right there. 
we zoom in? Yep. Okay, so we do have a camera which can capture the first steps on the surface of the moon. And then I'll figure out what the other cameras can do that's useful later. For now, I just want to take my first steps on the moon. And he's climbed out of the capsule. His lamps are on. And it's the first steps on the moon. This is accompanied with uh, ra with loads of rounds of half-hearted cheers back home when the, my in-helmet camera reveals this pile of wreckage beer as what used to be my spaceship. I don't have any control systems aboard, so I can't turn on these lights or anything. And the power was meant to come from my capsule back there. But regardless, I'm just lucky that uh, these cameras all still work because they have their own separate power units or something. Now, um, I want to figure out uh, if slash what this camera is doing. Um, the if really should be working, not doing that. Um, I'm gonna zoom this one back out. Yeah, it looks like this camera probably broke off in the blast and just wasn't destroyed. But of course, it can't rotate. Yeah, there's no cameras on this pod. Alright, so, time to figure out what I'm actually meant to be looking for. So I'm just meant to look for sort of anomalies, I guess, along here, because the Munsat, whoa, reported something. Hello, that's not a rock. Hmm. Hey, is my laser working? Looks like my laser is broken also, darn it. Okay, let's see if I can orient one of the cameras to look at that thing. This one's the only one which is on the right side of the ship. One which is on the correct side of the ship, darn it. I think these three are all on, are all the boom cameras. The boom cameras survived. Um, we doing a little spin jump. You can see it on that camera. Whenever the view, this view inside my helmet might not be the best. Sometimes, whenever that happens, it's probably best to get one of these cameras. I'm going to try and get these cameras focused on something kind of useful, at least. What's that? It's probably a rocket engine, I think. Okay, so now I'm looking at that camera. Oh yeah, it's the top of this rocket engine. So if I look below that, I might actually be able to see the thing with this camera also. Because we're sort of wedged up on those stands. So this camera can sort of see under the ship. Now, um, let's see if I can get this camera to actually give me a better visual of that strange thing. Let's rotate it so that it's the correct way up also. There we go. And then, what was that? It's like a box or something. I think, is that it? Yeah, one of the lander legs is partially obstructing it, but it looks like that's it. Yep, that's it. Okay, so that's one camera with a visual of it right now. I can get this other camera to do that eventually, probably. But right now I'm using the zoomed out view so I can see myself also, because I'm egotistical. And also, if this is an alien artifact, it's probably important that I don't, you know, do the horror movie thing and turn all of my cameras away from me. Next, let's see if this camera can get a useful view. Can view its spa crashed spaceship. I'm not interested in that. It can't turn, so... I guess the only thing it can do is sort of look at the crashed spaceship and make sure there are no aliens eating it or anything. Speaking of eating, I'm chewing on my cable again, darn it. Uh, you guys didn't need to know that. Let's rotate it so that it's actually my way up. There we go, and now this camera's ready. And now this camera. Can this camera look under the ship? 
might. Let's lock that. Well, if you changed when I locked it. Oh yeah, I don't want to lock it. I want to fix it. Oh, now I've lost it. Yeah, locking it appears to have it try and acquire a target to lock onto. And probably locked onto some debris or something. So let's see, it was under this lander leg, right? Yep, there we go. There we are, right in the edge of the frame. I guess I'm lucky the rocket isn't shifted a foot that way or I wouldn't be able to see it. And again, I guess that depends on how far away it is. I'm not really getting a sense of scale here. Um, but anyways, this camera now. Um, yeah, this one looks good. In fact, I might use this one to be the one which maintains a constant visual, visual on the object. There we go. About to say can't see it, and my camera makes me look like an idiot. Whoa. Is that the Apollo 11 capsule? Or are there any of the Apollo capsules? Hmm. Okay, so I'll try and take this camera, and that'll probably give me a pretty good view of myself as I walk towards the artifact. I'll take this one and keep a zoomed out for you of my own pod. Can I see the artifact from it also? Yeah, but I'll keep this one on my pod because that place is really where what I need to survive. And so I need to make sure that an alien doesn't eat it or something. There we go. And... All that stuff looks good and everything's fixed in. This one's got a visual of that. This one's going to have a visual of me and this one's going to have a visual of the pod. And is my laser working yet? Nope. Okay. And here I am again, coming back into the frame. So let's head off. Um, once I reach 60% of my fuel, I'll stop. But for now, I'm going to try using my jetpack in order to get to it faster. Huh. Judging from the way I'm looking, this one probably has the uh, artifact in its view also. I'm going to call it the, the, um, what do you call that? It's like a three-dimensional trapezoid or something. I know there is a name for it, and I know, that, and I think I've even learned enough in math class that I could deduce the name if I really put my finger on it, but I think I've forgotten some part of it. Looks like my jetpack's working at least. I'm going to zoom this one in and try and track me with it as I go, I think. No, I'll leave this one zoomed out. I should try and track myself. Well, I'm just... I'm going to watch the main screen for now. Because... I just want to make sure that I'm actually... not dying or anything. I should get this one focused on the artifact then when I get a chance. Whoa, coming in low. Ah. Uh, climb. I'm using my jetpack basically to hover and fly across the terrain because it's a lot faster than trying to walk in low gravity. Oh, or sliding. Oh well, while I slide I can try and get these cameras better oriented. One still has a good view of the artifact, but I'm not sure where I am on it anymore. This one had me for a bit, but then I think I lost it or something. There's the artifact though. Is it? Yep. Rotate. And yeah, it really looks like the Apollo 11 capsule. Um, huh. What I'm going to do right now is where I am, because I'm not sure if any of these cameras are capturing me. There we go, I think now that's a rock. Maybe if I jumped up in the air. How far have I made it? Get up, you're not done yet. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep these cameras on the artifact. 
seeing as I can't seem to keep them on myself. Maybe as I get close to the artifact, one of them will capture me. There we go. I think this is probably as zoomed in as this one can beneficially be. Uh, now, which direction was the artifact in? This way, right? I suppose I could switch to this view to check. But, I don't know. It feels a bit like cheating, because if I'm behind a ridge line, I shouldn't just be able to have my camera fly up like this and, yep, I'm still on course. So I'm going to avoid doing that. And I'm just going to completely guess that it's this way. Yep. <laughs> and into the air I go. Hmm. No, I don't see it. My cameras are still reporting it though. At least the ones which can see it. This one isn't. What's going on with this? No, I'm just... To orient that one correctly, I guess. Oh, wait, there it is. Hang on. Gotta turn myself. Lift, darn you, lift! Lift, fly! Good. Checking my vertical speed. Making sure that I'm still hovering. Closing on the target. That gives me an idea where I am. I should be able to see myself on this camera, maybe. Red snow. Whoa, coming dangerously close to the ground. Hey look, there I am! I'm that little dot. There I am also. Wow. The artifact is big. <laughs> Breaking maneuver. As I shoot right past it. Ow! Ah! Ung! Ah! Sturdy spacesuit. And I'm dancing. And my character is dancing. Now he's doing cartwheels. Now he's rolling. Now he's sliding. 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 Oh look, I'm at 60%, so it's time for me to switch off the jetpack. Sliding slowly to a stop. Okay. Huh, there's something gold on this side of the artifact. That's strange. I suppose it could be brass, I don't know. Yeah, that looks more like brass than gold. I'm not sure. Playing this game, doing something like this, just feels awesome, because you really feel like you are the astronaut inside your spacesuit, watching the visuals from your spaceship with your enhanced reality system. Enhanced reality system giving you a sort of combat overlay of all those things. And meanwhile you've got some sort of annoying music playing in the background which is messing up the feel of it. Despite the fact that you tried to just turn it off. There we go. And now it feels much more like outer space. Quiet. Very quiet. Worryingly quiet. Slowly walking. Very slowly walking. Annoyingly slowly walking. I suppose I've still got a little jetpack fuel which I can use before I'm theoretically out. So let's see if I can just do a little more hopping. There we go. Okay, and now I'm rolling towards the target. It's faster than walking, I guess. Can't see it. The more and more I look at that thing, the more and more I'm sure that that's the Apollo 11 capsule. But it can't be. I mean, different universe and everything. Yeah, there's the flag. There's the capsule. And this thing is huge. I mean... Is that like a life-size capsule? Is that my ticket back home? Am I going to ride the Ale Apollo 11 capsule out of here? I'm probably not, because it, it doesn't have the correct coloration. It looks like it's carved out of marble or something. Or granite. Marble would be whiter. I know my rocks. Ah, uh, I know my rocks. I think that's me there. But I'm not sure. 
I'm not trying to move around these cameras because for all the slowness of their rotational speed I'd probably just lose it again anyhow the second I clicked. Because it would just like spin way too far to the left or to the right or to the up or to the down or to the rotate. Barrel roll! Gravity going weird! Whoa. Still slowly making my way towards the target. This camera is really doing nothing useful. If only that leg was a bit differently oriented. Maybe when I go back to the ship I can try and like yank it aside or something. And uh, I wish I had the high res camera which was on the laser system thing rather than these cameras because that one has the automatic target tracking and I could have it target me and then I could have just like a little image down here of myself in full high resolution and that'll make some awesome publicity shots because I mean this stuff is good for the newsreels like the grainy pictures of the crash and the astronaut landing but uh, um, what you want for publicity is the photos of the dashing green astronaut with the gigantic head uh, standing atop a strange granite statue. That looks like a plaque. And there's something written on it, but I can't quite make it out. Lights on. For <laughs> all the good it'll do. This is managing stuff aboard my spaceship. Which, of course, won't work because I've lost my data link. can't quite make out what it's saying. It looks like it's a name and then a time to 2012. 1930 to 2012. Probably a four letter word and then a long word. I'm guessing Neil Armstrong. And my character is doing a spin jump, which you can see from his lights because he's finally come back into the frame. Yep. Looks like Neil Armstrong, 1930 to 2012. And there is the stone carving of the Moonlander. <laughs> Sitting on those tiny little stone support legs. Then again, I guess you can do that because we're on the moon. And there, you don't have to worry about structural engineering as much. You know what? I bet that's what my engineers said. Oh, don't worry. It's the moon. We don't have to worry about structurally engineering this thing or anything. It'll be fine. MechJeb will land it perfectly. And it doesn't matter if the rocket, if the nuclear engines are a bit weakly attached. It'll all be fine. Yep, Neil Armstrong, 1930-2012. American flag and capsule. And I'm still strolling across the moon surface. I can't whistle. And it doesn't sound good inside a spacesuit anyways. But I'm finally approaching the thingy. I just realized I'm not sure if my mouse is even showing up on this recording. So I'm always pointing out things like different cameras with my mouse. But if it doesn't show up, you're all going to be like... Uh, early on in the recording, you're going to be saying things like, Over here! And you're going to be like, Over where? Show us! Hmm, I suppose I can use a bit of that fuel to jet up and have a look. 
because right now I can't really see anything because wow this thing is big I'm going to come around to the other side of it so this camera can give me an idea of the scale I'm going to kill my lamps for effect Yeah, look at that. It's just like, I'm like three pixels, and the thing is just towering above me. It's like, what's that, five, maybe eight, like twenty-ish, like a hundred pixels or something, just towering above me. I'm going to turn on my lights again. Rockets up. And if you're wondering what that movement of the helmet is about, it's because when I turn on my jetpack, my guy grabs his little jetpack control things. Now you can see it in the low res of that camera. But here we go. Jetpack. 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 You can only see it with as, as my light bobbing. So jump and kick in the pack for an additional height boost. There it is. Yep, no hope of me getting away on that thing. It is completely, um, stoned. It's stoned. Besides, I mean, the real one wouldn't have the command pod aboard it anyways. So I guess this is a memorial to him that the game developers put in. This is actually a whole bunch more fascinating than just a m moon arch or a moonolith. Because, I mean, those I've already read about, but this is something else. If I jump outside of the EVA view, let's give the... Let's get a better picture for the publicity than those photos give. what I look like from the crash site. You can't even see me. Closer up, though. It's beautiful. Let's move it forwards today. Let's move along here. Don't have all day. Come on, universe waits for no man. And, whoa. What happened there? Ah. With day dawning, that would make a great photo, except for the fact that I have no clue what's going on. Back to EVA view. Um, I just lost all com from my. I just lost all com from my ship. I wish I could be myself aboard here, but I've lost the capacity to. I'd better get back there because this camera wasn't on the ship, but all of the cameras with the ruin would. I've never heard about aliens in this game, but I've heard that there are certain artifacts which will destroy your ship. So, I need to get back there. I think that my ship might have just been attacked by something shortly before dawn. And I was fast forwarding, so I bet none of the cameras captured it. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Wait. Wait. Turn around. No, I can't. I'll do that to, on a second trip, but I need all the fuel I have to get back to my ship. I was going to. I was going to go and, uh, um, whatchamacallit, Kate, uh, plant a flag there. A more boost upwards, and I'm roaring towards my ship, soaring high above the land. Wow, my debris travelled far and wide. Sometime I might want to look through that debris and figure out which one of them the camera is. The camera, which is still intact. Oh, good, the ship looks okay. I'm trying to reverse now, but not being very successful. Am I going to get almost as far away as I was before, just on the other side? Because I forgot how to slow down ahead of time. This is what happens when you're not a rocket scientist. 
On the plus side, I've still got 10% of my fuel to play with. 9%, um, 8%, oh crud, this is looking bad. 7%, I'm just going to put the rest into a mad sort of rocket spray to try and get back. 5%, 4%, 3%, 2%. One percent. No fuel. Jetpack down and brace. Crunch. Ah. Oh. Floggity, floggity, floggity. Am I going to crash into my own ship? Ah. No. Oof. Ah. Ow. Whoa. Really sturdy spacesuits. I knocked a nuclear engine loose in my crash, but that was actually perfect because it slowed me down just the right amount. And it's still being supported by one very strong lamp. Okay. Now let me see if I can figure out what happened to these cameras. Looks like they must have run out of internal power or something, and since they're no longer on my ship. Well, I'd better get back to my pod. I'm out of fuel and I should get a recharge before I try and do anything else. Whee! Maybe I can figure out where this camera is and try and rescue it or something. I don't know. No, I could probably only do that if my laser was working. It's probably getting late anyhow and I should probably end this Let's Play in the... But I do want to put up a flag there before it's over. So I'll probably refuel my jetpack, fly to that, then fly back here, and then end the Let's Play, and then my next Let's Play. Yeah, uh, and then my next Let's Play, I'll try and save myself. Wee Oomph. This time I'll uh, let you all free of that cramped up inside the space helmet. And yes, you could practically hear those hyphens inside the space helmet feeling. And uh, I'll actually let you have the EVA view for this. Or rather, the non-EVA view, the in-head, but still EVA-ing view. Check back up. Where did the artifact go? There it is. Hmm, do I want to, plag want to flag the artifact? The artifact already justifies its own presence. I should actually probably plant the flag over here at the crash site to to say something about like the history behind the ship. This ship actually still has quite a bit of fuel in it. If I was ever going to establish a MUN base, this would be a good place to put it, because I could probably try and drain this ship's fuel reserves. It's also got some nice amounts of monoprop and things. And the area is pretty level. It's on a slope, but it's not far too unlevel. And I'm just breaking my legs again and my arm. This ragdoll is better than most ragdolls in how it works, but it still looks like you're breaking your own body parts far more than is healthy. Yes, it's healthy to break your own body parts once in a while. You should really try it. Once when I was younger, I broke my foot. Didn't feel any other foot pains for the rest of a couple of weeks. It was... It's healthy for you. Everybody go home and break a bone. Yes, go home. Because I'm sure you're not watching this in your own houses where it would be completely logical for you to be watching YouTube videos. I'm sure you're out somewhere using your phone rudely in public. Like the jerks you are. Because if you're viewing this channel, you're automatically a jerk. Just, just waving bye-bye to my viewers. They're, they're all going to go look at channels which don't insult them now. Um, but, yeah, th thank you very much for watching my channel. I, I think that means you're cultured and sophisticated. And, um, yes. I'll probably plant the flag, like, halfway between these two modules. You should subscribe to this channel. Okay.
gonna plant the flag Okay, site name. What should I call it? Um, I like to call my signs somebody's folly. So let's call this one Helix's folly. Here, mech jab. Failing to account for the rotation of the craft crash crash landed a really Williams spaceship Causing quite the kerfuffle plus cluster fluffle. <laughs> if you understand the reference there, um, then you either play too many video military video games or you are in the military or you look up expressions with rude words in them in your free time causing quite the cluster fluffle um, um, it is also the site of the first man landing and the discovery of the Armstrong Monument. <laughs> I didn't, th I just thought that up on the fly, that little play on words. Whoops. I really wanted to put a date in there, but um, we all know the date anyways because it's it's the recording date of this video. So there we go. Helix's Folly. There we go. Um, I guess I'll get back in my spaceship, and from there I'll end, and I'll do an outro for the Let's Play. Um, so yeah, uh, if you liked this, if you liked the commentary, um, if you liked the video game, if you felt just in a general good mood, please subscribe, because I need all the subscribers I can get. I am one subscriber away from doing my 10 subscriber special, and that will be when I have, um what all of you would call 12 subscribers but I am using base 12 for this because base 12 is better than base 10 it's more sort of efficient and base 10 is just generally egotistical from the fact that we have um, 10 digits on our hands 8 fingers and 2 thumbs so um, yeah so everybody uh, liked the video, liked really anything about this, uh, click that subscribe button. Um, also, check out my friend's channel, or if you came from my friend's channel, remember to subscribe a second time. Um, and then all of this will be linked in the little outro video clip thingy majiggy that I still don't know what to call it. End frame, I guess? I've been calling it end frame in the file names. Uh, so, in the little end frame, with uh, nice music by Dead Mouse, and you should go and buy the music from Dead Mouse so that Dead Mouse won't sue me for using a clip of his music, which is really good and is perfect for the end frame and helps convince all of you to do that subscribing that I still want you to do right now. <laughs>